Our journey starts in a tower where a battle took place long ago. Atop the tower are fallen knights of Drangleic, covered in ash and surrounding a brittle husk. For long ago, scores of men were dispatched to this land to tap the replete stores of iron. However, they soon lost their nerve when faced with the Child of Dark. These men conquered the dark creature that inhabited this tower, and ash is all that remains of it. We find six wedges of iron embedded in this creature's chest, the tools used to defeat it. These are smelter wedges, forged to destroy the ashen idol. One can assume that this knight, at the base of the idol, carried out that last task, killing the idol in his final moments. We see what the ashen idol is capable of in the next tower, a tower that feels very much alive where the previous one felt dead. Where before we saw an ashen husk, now we see a living creature, the Child of Dark guarding the old Iron King's throne, erecting great pillars of black flame in an attempt to keep us away. We have seen three Children of Dark thus far, women who are fragments of Manus, an ancient evil from Dark Souls 1. There is Nishandra, the Queen of Vendrick, Alana, the Queen of the Sunken King, and Nadalia, the woman who would be the Queen of the Iron King had she not arrived after his death. When Nadalia came to this land of iron, the king she sought was no longer there. Dispirited, she forsook her own soul and clung to the heirlooms of the old king. The Ashen Idol is of great consequence to Nadalia, a child of dark who renounced her flesh and entrusted her soul to these Ashen vessels. As we journey through the tower, we hear her whispering, we have just defeated the old Iron King, the man who would have been her husband. All players will have his soul at this point, and I believe that this is why her whispering seems to mistake us for her king. It's also possible that she sees us as the next king, a king who has come to take the crowns from previous rulers. There are twelve ashen idols hidden within this tower, vessels that house the queen's soul. They haunt the tower, and only when we've destroyed all twelve will the whispering stop. This child of dark, bearing inconceivable strength, found herself in a kingless land devoid of souls. Once you get all the fragments, her completed soul tells us that once she came to this kingless land and she enveloped the entire tower in a swirling, dancing black fog once she realized her king wasn't there. In the act of dancing, the Bride of Ash was transfigured as smoke, enticing people to her residence. And so, her seat of power came to be known as the Broom Tower. Broom is a word that means mist or fog. The lonely queen of black mist danced to entice knights into her realm so that she could either be entertained by their torment or consume their souls. And so scores of men lost their nerve when faced with the child of dark, with all but the most steadfast of them becoming servants of the black fog. It's worth noting, I think, that there is a trend here in both sets of DLC we have received so far. So, both the Sunken City and the Iron Towers have had the Knights of Drangleic assaulting them once the Kings have passed and once the Queens have taken over. So, think about it, both sets of Drangleic Knights have different reasons for attacking. The Drakeblood Knights, who we think are Drangleic Knights based on Yorg's ring resembling the crest of Drangleic, 
They assaulted Shulva to slay the dragon, and the Knights of Drang Lake, here at the Iron Tower, are supposedly attacking in order to claim the large quantities of iron hidden within. But is it possible that they're actually trying to get back the crowns of the previous kings? And is it possible that the queens, women who arrive after the kings are dead, is it possible that they are defending these crowns? For whoever has all the crowns can truly ascend the throne of want. My theory is that Vendrick is sending Knights of Drangleic to retrieve the crowns, but he's failing because every fallen kingdom is now protected by the Dark Queens. So Vendrick, once he realizes that Nishandra is a queen of his own, he locks himself and his own crown away to buy time, while we seek to reunite the crowns before the queens do. I believe it's most likely that the wandering knights of Drangleic who venture here turn into the goofy, hollowed barrel workers, where the ashen soldiers seem to be the remaining soldiers of the Old Iron King's kingdom based on the armor they're wearing. And speaking of armor, the third enemy we find is a possessed suit of armor. Once these suits of armor were decorations, until the black fog ruling the tower seized control of them. So we've talked about this tower in its current state. It was once the foundations of a great kingdom, a kingdom that was powerful because of its ability to forge and utilize great stores of iron. The queen who arrived at this kingdom came too late, and she found her king gone, and she found the kingdom abandoned. So who is this king, and where has he gone? At the bottom of the staircase, below the throne of the old iron king, we see a suit of armor. This is the armor of Sir Alon a knight who had a huge role in creating this kingdom, and after we talk about him, you'll understand how this kingdom came to be. Sir Alon came to this land from the east, chose to serve a little-known and unestablished lord, and helped him to become the old Iron King. The Iron King was not born into his title, you can tell that from that description. A semi-powerful lord, he wrested this dilapidated region from the kingdom of Ven, this act required all the resources the enfeebled lord could muster. After claiming this kingdom, the Iron King was weak, his resources all but spent. He was a king, but king of a feeble kingdom. However, just at the right moment, he found something awesome. He found the Scorching Iron Scepter. This scepter allowed him to mold iron freely, as if he held sway over the forces of life and creation. With the discovery of this iron-producing miracle, he was reborn as a powerful leader. The king's experimentation with iron shows throughout the entire kingdom and, just a spoiler, it leads to his demise. Anyway, the ironclad set tells us of the ironclad soldiers, minions created by the old iron king, a set of armor with life granted by the enchantment of souls. The tower key tells us that the tower was renowned for producing a seemingly endless supply of iron. The king used it to create iron soldiers and an iron castle. And we all know how creating that iron castle turned out. Anyway, legend has it, he even tried his hand at forging a dragon out of iron. I really wish there was more information given on this dragon. I mean, seriously, a dragon. Is it just me or are we seeing another example of history repeating itself? Every great kingdom seems to have a great dragon. Vendrick created the ancient dragon, that's the first one. Shulva worshipped the sleeping dragon. And the Iron Kingdom planned to craft their own dragon. So are these kings following an ancient mural they found on the wall, or is fate guiding their actions? Anyway, the Iron King went on to do great and terrible things. His exploits even extended to the Huntsman's Cops, the Iron King commanded the capture of all undead, but those charged with the task were overcome by the curse. The Executioner's Chariot was created only to torment undead, and it crushes undead underfoot endlessly in the undead purgatory. And this is a place for undead to supposedly experience punishment just for their existence. Around this time, the old Iron King's friend, Sir Alon, left the service of the King. Was it because of the atrocities the king was committing? For at the very peak of his rule, Sir Alon set out again, in search of lands yet unknown. Moving on from Sir Alon, in our journey through the king's abandoned tower, we find that Minotaur imagery dominates the place. The Minotaur helm was commissioned by the old Iron King. Wearing it gives the sensation of being smothered in iron. The Minotaur was the idol of Egil, as proven by the naming of a bonfire in the old Iron Keep, 
It's called Igel's Idol in reference to the giant minotaur presiding over the place. Igel was a pyromancer and he was a loyal follower of the old Iron King. And though I say he, but Igel's gender is not known. It was Igel's habit to create powerful pyromancies, such as the Dance of Fire and fire snake, with the latter pyromancy telling us that Igel sought to grant fire a will of its own. Igel the pyromancer succeeded in this. He created the smelter demon, which we can all thank him for. The smelter demon is a mass of iron that has been given a soul. Was this metal Goliath there from the beginning, or was it a product of the king's conceit? I mentioned that Igel's gender was unknown, because it's possible that Igel may have been a woman. We know that he's guilty of giving fire a will of its own. Does this ring a bell? This is a sin attributed to the lost sinner, a woman who willingly imprisoned herself within the Bastille for the great sin of trying to relight the first flame. Whether Igel is the lost sinner or not, Igel committed a great sin. He created the Smelter Demon, a mass of enchanted iron powered by fire, a being that came to life and killed the old Iron King. The earth spouted fire and a beast arose from the flames. The short-sighted king was incinerated by the creature in one swing, and his castle devoured in a sea of flames. The human ego. How many ugly iron castles has it erected? And they don't even see the folly of their ways. It reminds me of someone who lived long ago. A vainglorious liar who ended up hurling himself into the flames. Now he's Icarus Earth, if I'm not mistaken. The king sunk below the scorching iron, met the one whose name must never be repeated, and became the vessel that bred Icarus Earth, a giant winged demon. This description, and the soul of the old Iron King, tells us that the king was possessed by the things that lurk below. What are these things that cannot be named? It could be two things. Since the old Iron King also has the soul of Gwyn, it could be Gwyn's soul found deep below the earth that infused with the king to create Icarus Earth, the giant winged demon. It could also be Manus, found deep below in the abyss. Manus's name is deliberately avoided by King Bendrick and all item descriptions, after all. And perhaps Manus corrupted him in some way. Regardless, this is the king's fate, and it's the abrupt end to his very prosperous kingdom. Now in the present day, the Dark Queen has come to lay claim to the kingdom, just like all the Dark Queens before her, and she comes to be the bride of the Iron King. However, when she arrives, she finds the king has gone, so she haunts the tower instead. There was one before us who came to explore this Tower of Black Mist, as it came to be known after the Queen came. His name, the man who came here, was Raim, and he is the brother of Velstart, who is the Hand of the King. Raim and Velstart were known as the left and right arms of the King, until their wills clashed, and Raim was deemed a traitor. The rebel Raim, after his defeat by Velstart, came to Broom Tower in search of greater strength. When he found it, it came not from a regal father, as before, but from a newfound mother who gave him true purpose. Raim was a distinguished knight who became infatuated with the Bride of Ash, and he settled in this land of fog. The exile swordsman Raim had the ability to expunge the black fog, to remove it from this land, but he chose to live alongside it, in the company of the child of dark that haunts his sword. We defeat Raim in combat and we lay claim to the second crown, the crown of the old Iron King. I've got a challenge for you. I've chosen five things that you might have missed in the Iron Crown DLC, and I want to see if you can get all five. I like doing Things You Missed episodes alongside story mode, because it just feels really complete for an area. There's also an entire playlist of this stuff, if that's your thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, consider subscribing, feel free to rate the video, blah blah blah, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.